Hey there, fellows. So this car allows for adjusting the ground clearance, but it's on airbags, which are complicated and pricey. Now, a bunch of people asked how to make such a system that's cheap, simple and mechanical. One viewer even sent in a sketch. Okay, let's go ahead and make a simple mechanical system for adjusting ground clearance. Bottomed out. Yeah, very nice. Right then. Let's proceed uh, to increase the ground clearance. Big thanks for your support, guys. Your likes, views, comments. As a token of our appreciation, we've prepared an awesome surprise for you. We've collabed with a few professional artists and designers to make six posters depicting some of our most iconic builds. And we're giving you the opportunity to buy a digital copy of one of those posters. And at a bargain price, just $2 a piece. And if you order all six posters at once, the entire set is only going to cost you $10. After payment goes through, the posters will be emailed to you in high resolution. You can print them, hang them on your wall, or give them to someone as a gift. By purchasing these posters, you will really help support our channel in these difficult times. And the more of these we sell, the more great content we'll be able to make for you going forward. So if you want to support our channel, go ahead and buy a digital download. The links in the description. Picture sent to us by a viewer. We make suspension with mechanically adjustable clearance. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Check this out, guys. Here's what we've come up with. Here I've got a strut. It's all looking good. And here we've slightly discombobulated the mount bearing. All we really did was... remove the studs that attach to the tower. They used to be sticking up. And we want the car in the suspension's lowest position to be as low as possible. Right here we've got a sort of washer. And yeah, it is going to bring the car up by uh, 6 millimeters, but whatever. Some people install spacers that are a good 35 millimeters thick, so... The mount on this strut contains a bearing. It allows the whole thing to rotate without any of the angles shifting around. Anyway, so this part... It's going to be assembled like it would be in stock form. The difference being the studs are going to be pointing down. The nuts are going to be beneath the mount. And uh, since here we have a flat surface, it'll happily slip under the strut tower without getting in the way of anything. Okay, now since... the bearing is shaped like this, and it partially pokes out while... we've made the spacer ever so slightly taller. And in this spot, we're going to be welding in this big bolt-looking thing. These components will be free to move around. Okay, then there's the matter of securing the whole thing to the strut tower. For that purpose, we've got this sort of ring that we're going to bolt on top of the strut tower. Over that we're going to be placing a small spacer. And the next element is an adapter ring. There we are. And to that we're going to be welding a threaded nut. We are putting together a two-piece lift mechanism. Okay, time to piece everything together and see how the mechanism works. Let's carry on.
Okay, so look here. We've assembled everything. It's all looking good, and take a look at the strut towers. This here contains the threaded nut, and this right here is the screw that's going to be lifting the car. Yes, these are quite tall, but we've purposely decided we're not going to be trimming them down. The reason being we wanted to try and see um, what the maximum adjustment range would be. Now, with the screws being as tall as they are, we did have to slightly massage the hood. But we're ready, it's all looking good. And the weather is very much suited for this sort of experiment. Okay, let's head out. All right. We are good to go. The car is driving just like usual. It steers, all of that is good and well. It looks like that's a wrap. Yeah, we're done. Bottomed out. Yeah, very nice. Okay, if that's the case, then... Let's whip out the magic socket wrench. And yum. Let's go ahead and start bringing the wheels down. And the body relative to them up. Which is to say, increase the ground clearance. Okay, now let me go get the other side. Yeah, you can definitely tell that brought it up. Okay, so we've brought up the front end. Let's try driving away. Oh, terrific! Beautiful. Now let's try... At least it's moving back and forth, without too much trouble. And that tells us that the underbody, suspension components, sump and all of that, none of it is touching the snow that's uh, in between the wheels. Right, let's back up then. Check this out, guys. This is where we got stuck initially. And from the looks of it, the exhaust system, the gearbox, the sump, they were touching the snow. Those are marks from the radiator frame. But then I used the lift mechanism to bring the car up, and I was able to drive the car right out. Okay, so we didn't find any logs. They're all buried in snow. But we do have a wheel, and we've placed it as an obstacle. You see, these sorts of things tend to take you by surprise. In our case, you can see it, of course, but it easily could have been concealed in some dirt or water or what have you. You can easily miss something like that in certain conditions. That, in turn, can lead to the wheels hanging up in the air and just helplessly spinning. And there's nothing you can really do about it. We're going to try and simulate exactly that situation. And see how well the modified suspension fares in that sort of scenario. Let's go. I'm just going to pretend like I don't see that wheel lying on the road. What's going on? Won't drive backwards. Are the wheels not touching the road? What happened? Just spinning? I must have run over something. What might that have been? Good grief. Holy cow, somebody tossed a chunk of metal onto the road. And now it's time for the system to do its thing. Now I switch off the engine. And uh, proceed to bring the body up with the help of those screws. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. Oh, I see somebody's decided to help me out with this. 
<laughs> okay, got distracted with him making such strides. <laughs> so look here, we've jacked the car up, and you can tell that the wheels are firmly pressing into the ground. Now I'm gonna start the engine and try to drive away. Now we uh, can't really drive forward, so... I'm gonna throw this into reverse and slowly make my way out of here. That was a piece of cake. It worked beautifully. That was just excellent. No, I wasn't going to drive onto it again. One time will suffice. What did I run over, anyway? It looks like some kind of stump or something. And it is at this stage of the experiment where we... No, I didn't even damage anything. The gearbox hangs pretty low. And that's what uh, got caught on the wheel. But we jacked the car up. And it was able to drive away. Okay, so right here you'll see we've got a ruler. The car is in its lowest position. And we're going to be measuring the ground clearance. But over here, as opposed to lower down, for the sake of convenience. And so at this spot it's 410 mil, the car is on an even surface, but let's jack it up and see how much higher the ground clearance gets. Let's get to it. And so take a look at this. It used to be 410 mil, now it's at 505. Very nice indeed. I'd say this was a pretty fun experiment. The car went up by 90 millimeters, but that's about as far as you can take it because of the CV joints, which were on the verge of popping out, actually. It's a good thing they come with a mighty retainer. But on the other hand, if the retainer is too tenacious, then you run the risk of the axle shafts popping out of the gearbox. Hey, that's just how it is. But the lift system worked at the end of the day 107%. Try it if you don't believe me. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.